Assalamualaikum and good afternoon to all. So today I will present on a journal of facial plane block, more questions and answers. So this article discuss about the possible reasons of inconsistent effect of block and also how the structure and function of facial influences the spread and quality of block. So here is uh, my outlines of my presentation today includes the introduction, anatomy of fascia, innovations, type and functions, factors influence the quality of block, conclusions and for future research. As for my introduction, so uh, facial plane block is a modern regional anesthesia by injecting local anesthetic into facial planes. It is an alternative to epidural, paravertebral and perineural injections. Uh, the benefits of it, uh, we don't need to visualize the nerve or deposit local anesthetic close to nerve. Therefore, uh, the damage of the nerve and adjacent anatomical structures can be avoided. So for the anatomical of fascia, uh, what is fascia? Fascia is a complicated collagenous, fibrous, a connective tissue which encloses muscles. It separates muscles from other structures such as bones, nerve, vessels and viscera. It provides a framework for different parts of the body to function together. So here is the layer of the fascia. This is the deep fascia which enclose the muscles and it separates from the superficial fascia by this adipose tissue. Uh, moving on to the innovations of the fascia. Uh, fascia is a sensitive organ richly innovated with sympathetic and non fibers. It is actively involved in proprioception and nociception. Uh, the innovation pattern of deep fascia has been described as the fascia tome, uh, which can contribute to both acute and chronic myofascial pain syndromes. Uh, it is distinct, distinctly different from localized pain derived from dermatome uh, because the radiating pain generating from the fascia tome follows the organization of the facial anatomy. So there are two types of fascia. Uh, which are superficial fascia and deep fascia. For superficial fascia, it is a layer of loose connective tissue. It functions to maintain the skin integrity and support subcutaneous structures. For deep fascia, uh, it is a fibrous uh, structure that covers muscles. The function is to maintain posture, absorb force uh, for movement stability and proprioceptive communications. So the target for fascia plane block is the deep fascia which can be further divided into epimysial and aponeurotics. The epimysial, as we can see here, is enclosed the muscles, which is very thin as compared to aponeurotic here. It is thicker than epimysial and it is separated from the epimysial by the, um, uh, by the connective tissue and fat. Uh, next is the summary of the types of deep fascia. Uh, which I mentioned earlier, epimysial and aponeurotic. Aponeurotic is thicker than epimysial, which envelops several muscles. Compared to epimysial, it's specific to each muscle only. And then it can, for aponeurotic, it can be found in the thoracolumbar fascia, rectus sheath, and deep fascia of limbs. The blocks, examples of for aponeurotic plane blocks is adductor canal, ESP, fascia iliaca, quadratus lumbarum, and rectus sheath. For the epimysial, uh, it is usually adherent to muscles via fibrous septa and it is uh, difficult to separate it from the muscles. Uh, it can be found in deep fascia of trunk muscles such as pectoralis major and latissimus rosa and the epimysium of limbs. The block examples can be performed at the epimysial such as pets 2 block, serratus anterior plane block and tap block. Uh, so moving on to the factors that influence the quality of block. The first factor is the thickness of facial plane. A thicker upper neurotic facial plane represents a greater physical barrier to LA diffusion, while a thin epimysial facial layer might make LA diffusion easier. So this influences the ability to accurately deposit LA within a plane and its spread. Um, and then, uh, because the epimysial layer is adhered to muscle, so it is more difficult to inject local anesthetic with, pre with precision. And then, um, epimysial layer is very thin, so it is easily penetrated into the perimysium, which will further enter the muscle, especially during the high injection pressure. However, uh, this is only a speculation. Ultimately, how facial thickness structure and adherence to surrounding tissue impacts the performance and efficacy of facial plane blocks is uncertain. 
Additionally, uh, the fascia is perforated by blood vessels and nerve which allow LA to spill out of the target plane and hamper spread. Uh, and then the changes in fascia architecture also play a role such as thickening, thinning and scarring due to aging, trauma, disease states, uh, diet and exercise which also affect the spread and effectiveness of the block. Okay, um, uh, for the second uh, factors affecting the consistency of the block is line of fusion. So it is the site where fascia fuse, for example, is linear alba. Uh, it limits the LA spread and new pathological uh, line of fusion from addition formation may develop after surgery or trauma. Uh, it can act as a roadblock in a fascia in a fascia space, restricting LA diffusion, which leads to inconsist inconsistent block. For example, in the rectus sheath block, uh, the, in the rectus sheath block, basically we inject the LA between the rectus abdominis muscle and the posterior rectus sheath. The aim is to anesthetize the anterior cutaneous branches of the thoraco abdominal. So because of the presence of this linear alba, it prevents spread to the contralateral side. So we must perform bilaterally for midline surgery. Uh, so here where uh, we should deposit our LA, it's at the rectus abdominal muscles and the posterior uh, rectus sheath. Uh, the next factor is the facial interconnectivity. So many facial planes are continuous and communicate with each other. Some are continuous for large distances without any interrupting boundary, which allow LA to spread far and wide. It may improve or impair plane block effectiveness. For example, in the quadratus lumbarum block, the LA spread can be from the anterior surface of the QL muscle to reach the thoracic paravertebral space or it can also spread within the facial plane to the nearby ventral rami. Because of this facial interconnectivity, it can spread in several directions either medially, laterally, cephalate and caudate along the path of least resistance and as a result, it can cause unpredictable extent and direction of LA spread. Uh, next is facial function, which is gliding. Fascia, fascia has complex physiology. It permits gliding between the fascia sublayers and between fascia and muscles, bones and joints. Alterations in the ability of fascia planes to glide freely will have different implications for each individual, which may cause pain, inflammation and potentially loss of function. Uh, basically, the fascia gliding is influenced by hyaluronan. It's a lubricating glide glycosaminoglycan, which is secreted by fascia sites, which can be found on the surface of fascia sublayers. The viscosity of the hyaluronate is altered by changes in body temperature, pH and physical strain, which could alter and spread within a fascial plane. So this is the comparison between the ESP and TAP block. Uh, because the gliding between the erector spinae muscle is greater than TAP, Therefore, the spread of LA following an ESP block is potentially more widespread compared to TAP block. Next is nerve variation. The main types of nerve to consider when performing fascia plane blocks, there are three. First, somatic nerve traveling through the fascia plane. Second, sympathetic nerve traveling through the fascia plane. And then the third is nerve to the fascia which are from said somatic and sympathetic nerve. How far they travel within the plane and where they enter and exit the plane is inconsistent. Therefore, LA injection into the fascia plane may not reach the nerve targets, which can cause inconsistency of the blocks. Other factors such as influenced by pressure factor, ventilation, muscular contraction, as well as technical factors such as needle size, needle orientation, and injection pressure influence spread. However, it is unclear how LA spread or block. For defining block success and failure, at present, there is no consensus on, on the definition of a successful or failed fascia plane block. This is because the sensory anesthesia of the fascia block injection is inconsistent. So the reliable indicator to assess outcome of block is motor loss and sensory loss. But what if patient does not achieve both motor loss and sensory loss? We still cannot say that it is a failure. It might be a differential block where the low concentration of LA only sufficient to block small unmyelinated C fibers without affecting larger A delta fibers. So as conclusion of this article, it says that current understanding of the anatomy, physiology and pharmacological of injected drugs pertaining to facial pain blocks is incomplete and imperfect. 
we, did, we do not know which patient block and anatomical factors influence each technique. So as for future research, for this block to become more consistent, studies are needed to determine the optimal site, plane and direction of needle access as well as the speed and pressure of injection and the desired sonography endpoints. Ideally, should include a re relevant and consistent definition of success and failure. A well-designed comparative studies using active comparators are encouraged to evaluate clinically meaningful outcomes for this block. So uh, that's all for my presentations. My reference is Fresh Pain Block um, by Nick D. Black et al. Question. I have a question. Can we, like, for example, uh, erector spinae plane block? Uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, we read a lot of cadaver study regarding the spread. Uh. Uh, what do you think? Uh, uh, can this cadaver study be used as a guide to 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 uh, to explain the mechanism of erector spinae plane block? Um, in my opinion, uh, we cannot use cadaver study because the spread it might be uh, influenced by the ventilations of the patients as well and the, the movement of the chest. So in cadaveric study, that, uh, it is, the ventilation part is already gone. So the spread may be only focused uh, at the local site. It's not well spread far and wide. That's my opinion. I think it's about the tissue composition in the cadaver compared to a living human being. We have a different composition and different water composition. Everything will affect the, the uh, component inside, I think. So that's why if we base purely on the cadaveric study to see the extension of any patient pain block, it can, I think it can just become a landmark to see how far it extends. Rather than saying that uh, this block we surely block this area because from uh, whether which area that the block uh, works, we still need to do on the uh, subjects and then we do the normal pin trick, those kind of things. Even though I think from the from this article itself, it did mention that we don't have a concrete. Uh, definition about the block failure and success in terms of the facial pain block. Most of the studies, I think, don't really mention about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because there's, I mean, there's, uh, to get a very clear endpoint for facial pain block, it's difficult, not like peripheral, where the motor block and, and sensory. This one sensory and uh, most of yeah, most of the time sometimes we don't even test block 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 okay get myself yeah. so a bit difficult but I I don't know uh, when this is my opinion yeah. uh, when first facial I mean when facial pain block first introduced. Uh, like QL, tap block, uh, we tend to, oh, I think it, it's okay, it's okay, but after a few years, uh, I think I'm a bit more skeptical sebenarnya. <laughs> so, even ESP, uh, we have been doing uh, ESP, for most of our thoracic patients, uh, if you, uh, um, I found that some some, not to say sometimes, uh, most of the time, ESP uh, don't work in post thoracic surgery. Uh, even for vets, uh, I don't know whether it is because. Uh, it's because uh, the LA uh, duration is short because uh, we tend to give uh, diluted concentration and the operation is sometimes four or five hours. At the end of operation, it's already the, the, the LA duration has uh, finished. But, but yeah, I, I, the uh, nowadays I tend to think that 
facial plain block uh, only 50-50 lah kot <laughs> uh, not even 60-40 uh, so other opinion but, but I've seen ESP works very well uh, dekat mana? Oh, IPO patient with multiple rib fracture uh, he gave uh, ESP after the injection, I think two three minutes after that, patient just starting to just keep quiet. I mean, tak jadi jadi lah. And then uh, <coughs> even in my patient, I think uh, chest recon, uh, she was in pain. The next day, I inserted ES, uh, ESP with catheter. Patient so okay, but the outcome. It's not consistent. Uh, variable so you, you cannot have a block works on monday tuesday tak jalan wednesday jalan so i don't know whether it's because of the uh, the, the, the performance or uh or memang inilah the explanation so kalau thoracic eh if thoracic if you really want to give I mean, just if we have justice the patient Parabetabra. yang betul-betul jalan para vertebral epidural lah. But from back surgery nak tak epidural macam probably probably a bit over here. But para vertebral yes. Uh, ESP uh, I said probably 50-50. Kalau thoracic list on Monday jalan, on Tuesday tak jalan. <laughs> So, jalan tak jalan, jalan tak jalan, jalan Monday, Friday dia jalan Kenapa Monday, Friday jalan? I don't know, 50% kan? So. Uh, is it because of the, the end target for ESP ya? Uh, to place the the local anesthetic between the muscle and the transverse process Is it because it's very difficult to pinpoint the transverse process in a lot of patients? I, I think the when you talk about facial pain block, uh, um, different approach probably has different outcome. Uh, example like PECS, I think PECS have clearly shown that there's a difference. Huh? But for ESP, <coughs> one is something new. And then you have, uh, you have uh, different uh, sites for to cover different uh, part of the the chest and the abdomen so the the difference can be large uh, and depending on on where you set your middle tip okay for example previously they mentioned ESP you have ESP1 ESP2 one is below, one is superficial to ES muscle, ESP2 is deep to uh, ES muscle, and then they have, they have um, previously mentioned about retro lamina block, which is te technically is still ESP, uh, and then the current understanding is uh, your needle must be between ES muscle and transverse process. But if you um, if you look at the 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 uh, uh, biologic, uh, <clears throat> you know that muscles have different layers of of covering. Same like nerve, you have um, epineurium, perineurium, endoneurium. So probably muscles also is similar. You have epimysium, perimysium, and then this fascia. Once you are close to the bone, bone have periosteum, and this also uh, have a se separate uh, covering. And when you have muscle plus bone, and muscle plus muscle, the the there's a difference in the the density of the attachments. So if you were to perform trans uh, ESP at the point where muscle and uh, transverse process 
you may find there's some extra coverings that you need to puncture, you need to penetrate compared to a point intertransverse uh, area where you have just the ES muscle and the the, the tissues, the, the collective tissues be, below ES muscle uh, and the, the, the intercostal or, or the paravertebral space. So the, the re resistance may be less intertransverse rather than below ES and on transverse process. So technically there is some difference. You have to you have to acknowledge there's some difference uh, in the in the in the in the in the density of the, the, the layers. So that affects the spread. Your earlier question much um does uh, cadaveric uh, studies from cadaveric results uh, can, can be taken as, as, a, as a guide. Probably yes, but then it will not uh, give all the answers. Ideally, you should have uh, studies, similar studies, but on live patients. Um, dye studies, um, you inject dye and you scan either spontaneous or IPPB because those are two different uh, there's two different mechanisms one is positive pressure and one is negative pressure so the dif there will be difference in spread so so for ESP probably and, and even QL especially if you perform anterior QL that goes high up into the thoracic paravertebral space so, so technically there are um, uh, issues that needs to be addressed uh. Uh, so, so ESP probably is a, is a bit more, uh, there probably a, a lot more questions than answers, but for facts, I think those are, are, are fairly quite simpler, uh, simpler to, to understand uh, and we can actually know how, how it works. But for ES, we have to, ESP has, has to be investigated further. Any comments? Uh? Any points to highlight, share. For tap block, I think probably tap block is 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 um, is an equivocal area. You 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 can have success uh, in some papers, but some other papers say it does not work. Um, again, it depends on where you are. So I guess. Current faster sound technology probably may not be an uh, advanced enough for us to actually see where at which layer we are. Uh, there were some studies um, microscopically looking at spread, and most of the time they say that you are actually, even though you you think that you see the the the, the locus in the correct plane but when you cut and perform uh, microscopic examination most of the locus are still in the muscle contact block so I guess uh, it is still uh, uh, equivocal if you look at mental analysis tap block since we have the most experience uh, in that, it is still there's no conclusion. Basically, there's nothing to, to there's not enough clear evidence to say that it works. Um, uh, for for different types of surgeries, so I guess it is still something that we have to to investigate further. You want to you don't have to Okay, if you want to if you were to perform a, a facial plane block, if you go as peripheral as possible. For example, if laparotomy, rectal shift. Or hernia, below and minor. So the the plane will be closer. So you know that oh okay you can you can actually target there rather than go 
more proximal where you have layers of muscle mm. like that for ASM technically it should be better because it's more proximal but since we have this issue more question than answer so for now I guess we just go as far as possible I tend to agree my, nowadays my bias is towards if abdominal surgery is practice shift block rather than four quad I mean uh, tight block, bilateral tight block and bilateral subposter block or bilateral I like QL I, I, I not to say I don't think QL doesn't work but uh, I, I feel actor shift block works better at least in my hand uh, ESP I think we still need more research no evidence yeah. uh, which layer works the best or, or if it works okay so we need more research in that but to I mean to be to give justice to the patient especially for thoracotomy open thoracotomy I think ESP Sometimes it's not enough, so probably you need to think of giving paravertebral for the patient. So conclusion? Your conclusion? Your conclusion? So do, what do, you we, do you think we should still do the patient pain block as part of our body order or should we just choose mm -hmm. a certain macam? I think we should continue doing what we have now and at the same time we need to uh, do more studies about the <laughs> uh, to determine the uh, the effectiveness of the block lah. we need to do more studies lah about that but we just continue doing what, whatever we have now lah. I think the best way is to audit our own tactics. <laughs> if you have, if, if you, okay, you, you have certain interpretations, okay. For example, okay, if I do my uh, ESP block at the transverse process, you think that your spread is adequate. You go and review, you see what's the outcome. If you don't think that the outcome is favorable enough, then you look back at your practice whether that spread that you think was correct probably may not be so you look at other uh, alternative either you want to give inter transverse process or retro lamina but within the same uh, um, uh, depositing the local within the same plane that may be uh, uh, that works better so maybe that is how it should be for you so technically it is still operator dependent but and, and it depends on the operator's interpretation of what is the correct plane so it, it is still a good block if you have enough practice and you audit back and you look uh, at the outcome and you find it works then probably it works in your hands so basically that's what we need to do do and audit and then look back and learn so because when you look at papers you see you see other people doing it and they say it doesn't work and some do the same block describe everything the same methodology all the same but their conclusion say it works so there it, there has to be an element of um, operator uh, dependency that determines whether it works or not so I guess if it works in your hand then it works whatever block that you do so so those are the points that, that 
need to be uh, understood lah before before you you, you, you say uh, oh paper says there's evidence to show that it works so hence it must work whoever does it but technically it's not like that it, it's not as clear cut as that. What would be a what would be a good guide? I mean, for us to audit ourselves, is it pain score, morphine usage, or yeah? Okay, if you look at papers, traditional method has always been pain score and and twenty four hours uh, morphine requirement. So those has always been the 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 endpoint, the parameters, the outcome measures that you look at. But then, uh, some are saying that um, most of the time, when you have that parameter, you you didn't actually look in the first place whether your block uh, was working or not. So they add that first before you. It means that if the block failed in, in the first place, you don't you you can't take them into the sampling. Then you may look at the pain scores and so so those are the things that they added on after that and then later they uh, look at um, uh, they look at different pain scores at different times and they plot uh, as a graph and they look at area under the curve so those are some uh, the, the differences um, the difference uh, parameters they are, look, they are looking into when uh, taking into consideration uh, whether your block works or not. So those are the I think currently this area under the curve and the 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 few variable. Uh, some some study take uh, at OME oral morphine equivalent. Some area under the curve. Some pain score. And I think this. All has been, I mean, uh, challenged because two milligram. Uh, if you take, like, say, let's say, uh, oral morphine equivalent of two milligram to be significant, what is two milligram? Two milligram is actually not mm. much. So, uh, if that, that uh, if that's uh, if you take into opioid consumption, eh? but if pain score, eh? difference of two. Or sometimes even one or two pin score. Uh, if ten from pin score ten to eight, still very painful. But from five to four to two, it doesn't make sense. Right. So you need something more um, relevant in terms of. Uh, Benefit to the patient or something, something that patient said yes, it makes a difference to me. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than, uh, what's your pain score? Four. Okay, after block, two. So, um, how's your pain? Okay, uh, but does it real? I mean, relevant? I mean, yeah, make a difference to the patient or not? This is what we call a term called uh, clinical relevance. Uh -huh. Let's say. So much incentives, those kind of things. Maybe functional. Uh -huh. uh, maybe. Much like if you say yeah, movement. Mm. Let's say let's say pain score. Uh, and when you uh, set out to do the study, you mention okay, we define a reduction in pain score. Uh, a significant reduction in pain score is a drop of one on the NRS. Let's say. Uh -huh. But the, the drop of 1 can be from 10 to 9 or 9 to 8. So it is still clinically not significant, although it is statistically significant and you count your sample based on the drop of 1. So that's why I think recently I may share the paper uh, statistically significant but clinically not relevant. So I guess. Um, we have to look at what is defined as clinical relevance first before we see whether there's any difference or not. So, for example, uh, for example, one meta analysis on TAP 2015. 
they have already said that has uh, uh, benefit in terms of a reduction of 24 hour morphine consumption of 12 milligrams. But 12 milligrams in 24 hours is just 0.5 milligrams per hour between a patient who is on tap and the next patient who is not even tapped. So for 0.5 milligram difference of IV morphine per hour, it's clinically not relevant. But the paper, the mentality said that's benefit. So, so that's how you translate paper evidence into clinical. So, so there's some, you need to have to interpret the results of papers differently. Okay? So you look you look at uh, conclusions differently from now on. So, so those are the things that you need to look at when you look at papers. So now we are saying that you now let's say we are doing a new paper. We are trying to shift our primary outcome for purely looking at the pain score to something more functional or... Maybe possible now. Let's say um, for TKR or for uh, 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 like the of the knee, you see a uh, degree of anger mm. difference or... or, or or uh, distance walking uh, to put the relevance of, put of the, the, the the relevance of the some, some case study like uh, the for previously pain uh, they did pain pain score and after after all that straight leg raising after after the block uh, they use that uh, to raise the how how many can they raise the leg after the block yeah twenty minutes after the block uh. It, besides reduction in pain score, they do a straight leg raising test for the patient to see how much pain if they have during that pro the process. But Maybe still looking at the pain, still rather, looking than, at the pain rather than during looking movement, at the... Uh, looking at the functional achievement, not, not really, but just pain during that, that ra raising the leg. No, the, the, the other thing is, if, if, if you look at pain score, uh, it doesn't sound logic in the sense that is it ethical for you to allow a patient to have pain score more than four? So even if you do a block and in a, another population where you don't do the block, will you allow the pain score to be so much different? No. So the so if the protocol will say that oh pain score less than four, then you discharge. So definitely the pain score will be four. So how how can you assess? Pain score, and you you even though the patient is not on uh, was not on block was not given block, then you have to measure something else. How much uh, rescue was given to achieve that pain score of four before discharge? So for so you may so pain score may not be a good parameter for you to compare. So whether that whether need of rescue or whether you need supplementary uh, opioids. Rescue opioids, uh, additional IV uh, drugs, that may be another indicator to say that or oh, your block works or your block doesn't work. So if pain score, probably not lah. So you look at others, total opioid, total uh, like oral morphine uh, equivalents or IV fentanyl equivalents. Those are the few things that they are uh, that are frequently being measured in, in papers. And this, uh, and then the area under the curve. So th those are few newer things that have been looked at. So it's interesting to look at meta analysis actually, and look how they look at their results. Okay. 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 Thank you, Fatin, for the short presentation. So I think uh, everyone have a rough idea about the facial pain box and the stance, the our stance in doing it. Thank you for the attendance. Thanks everyone.